Punk Revolution now. Today I am going to be reviewing Shame's new album, Drunk Tank Pink. I don't know what the hell that means, honestly, but maybe it's something British, because this is a British band, a British post-punk slash art punk slash noise rock band. My last review of the Viagra Boys album, which I reviewed like just a few days ago, I went on a little bit of a rant about this sort of trend in rock music right now, especially in Europe where there's just like all these post-punk, art-punk, noise rock bands coming out, making music to me that feels a bit derivative and generic and kinda, you know, it just feels very trendy and I'm not into it. You know, of course these are talented bands. I mentioned Shame as an example in my last video, one of many bands who are doing this style right now. So, you know, I, 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 I you know, they're a talented band, but I didn't love their debut album for that reason. This is their sophomore album. So going into their sophomore album, I do have a little bit of reservations because this is a style and genre genre and trend in music right now I'm not crazy about, but maybe shame will prove me wrong. Let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the album cover. This is an interesting album cover. You got this kind of bald looking guy who looks sort of depressing and it's like a dark kind of mysterious cover. You're not exactly sure what's going on, but it looks kind of depressing and, and anxious. Getting you in the mindset you're about to listen to an anxious post-punk album, very post-punk album artwork. Kind of mysterious, kind of cool. It's a good cover. Musically, I will say this album certainly does fall in line with Idols and Viagra Boys and all the other noisy, artsy post-punk bands around nowadays. You know, the, the bands I've critiqued for being, you know, trendy and kind of not really contributing anything too much to the genre. However, maybe Shame has kind of proved me wrong a bit here because to Shame's credit, they actually are bringing a lot of interesting stuff to the table in this genre, in this trend in rock music that I thought was pretty vapid. Shame is actually bringing some stuff here that I find really enjoyable. Some really interesting rhythmic work, some cool time signature changes from here to there. Sometimes I'll be playing really fast and one time signature and all things. Sometimes things will kind of slow down and feel really grand and big, like a big build up. And then there's a chorus singing. You know, it's, it's, it's like doing some things here that just feel a little bit more Dr driven to be innovative, which I think is great. I love some of these riffs that are pretty dissonant, sound like they have some reverb on them, much in the same style as like Preoccupations or Woman. And there's also some moments here where there's some like kind of bleepy bloopy sounds that sound kind of like talking heads. And when this band brings all these elements together at their very best with these interesting time signatures, really tight, smart playing, really captivating song structures that keep you on your toes from start to finish, and even some crescendos here and there, through this album, like when they execute it well, it kicks ass. Like the song Snow Day, I think that's a fantastic song. The song Station Wagon, I think that's a fantastic song. Like they are really proving themselves to be above and beyond a lot of their contemporaries here. So I think that's great stuff. I do feel like sometimes about this album, it does feel like they're trying a little too hard to be artsy, a little too hard to come off like the experimental, which is actually an issue I've had with a lot of these, these contemporary post-punk bands. I do feel like it's sort of like forced artsiness. Like when the vocalists of these bands are like cosplaying insanity and they throw a freaking saxophone in there. I, I, I don't like that at all. Thank goodness Shame doesn't do anything like that here, but they are certainly, uh, you know, they, you know, I think that's the song Born in Latin. I think that's a good song, but the, the, the time signature change in there does feel a little bit forced, unlike some of their other songs like Snow Day, where the, the, the time signature changes and the crescendos feel a little bit more natural. It does feel like sometimes they're just kind of really committed to this idea of being this experimental artsy band and they're going to just try Try some things in there that don't really feel so natural. I do feel a sort of like anxious energy throughout this album. Like they're really committed to trying so hard to like blow you away with their music and and it's they do have some great songs in there, so it's it's kind of okay, but also there's a lot of songs in here, like the opening track, Alphabet, which is actually a pretty straightforward song. doesn't really bring too much to the table. There are some songs that are do follow kind of like a verse chorus verse chorus structure with a not very interesting vocal melody that does kind of fall in line with a lot of the, the uninteresting music coming out from their contemporaries as well. But I'm very thankful that at least this is a, the, 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 there's something here in this sea of this trendy, artsy, noisy post-punk. There's, there's, you know, there's hope. It's not all garbage. It proved me wrong like there's this is not all about just being freaking trendy there's actually some creativity here i hope shame can continue to build on the parts of this album that i like while keeping it organic and natural and comfortable sounding without it sounding like they're really trying super hard but i think it's cool and i'm happy about that and it's you know really cool to see some preoccupations and woman influence some cool talking head in, heads influence just lots of cool different influences coming together uh in a way that i do actually feel is not just regurgitating their influences and in a way that wants to be innovative. So I'm very happy about that, even though this album has 
its flaws. It has some flaws that the other bands that I've talked about also have. I'm giving this a, a 7.7 7 out of 10. I'm happy with this record. Great stuff. Go check it out if you're into this noisy artsy indie post punk because this one's really actually pretty damn good and I think it's I think it's a good I think it's a good record and it's got some great songs on it. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Please like, comment, and subscribe. My subscriber count has grown so fast about to hit 3,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. It's all because of you who are helping me with Punk Punk Revolution. Now, we're going to have a Punk Revolution and shame on you, all the pop stars like Lana Del Rey, who is racist. You're a shady freaking, you're a freaking racist. So, that's all I got to say. Thank you for watching Punk Revolution. <laughs>